Hi, my name is Mike Wilch. Today we are going to be looking at recurring transactions in General Ledger. In this video, we will talk about what a recurring transaction is in General Ledger and walk through the process of creating a recurring transaction and then how to generate a recurring transaction. Let's first start with explaining what a recurring journal transaction is and situations it may be used for. A recurring transaction is a journal transaction generated on a periodic basis for a fixed amount. Fixed amount means that all of the debits and credits in the transaction are the same amount each time the transaction is generated. The same recurring transaction batch cannot be generated more than once in a period. Examples of recurring transactions may include amortization of prepaid expense, such as a prepaid rent or insurance, or depreciation of a fixed asset using the straight line method. Now that we have a better understanding of what a recurring transaction is, let's enter one into Microsoft Dynamics SO. In the financial module, we'll go to General Ledger, and recurring transactions are entered and released in the Journal Transactions screen. However, a batch is not actually generated until the generate recurring process is run, which we will talk about later in this video. In this example, let's use a $10,000 insurance payment that is made once a month for 12 months. It will create a recurring transaction in the journal transaction screen in a similar manner as a non-recurring transaction. The difference is the batch type will be recurring. And once you select that, you will notice current cycle and number of cycles becomes enabled. The current cycle field is used to specify how often the transaction is generated. If you type 1 in the current cycle field, the transaction is generated every period. If you would enter a 3, the transaction is generated every third period. Since this insurance payment is to be made once a month, we will set the current cycle to 1. The number of cycles field is used to specify the number of times a transaction is generated. In this case, we want one payment a month for 12 months, so we will enter 12 for the number of cycles. The control we will set to 10,000. And for the debit, we will use account 7100 and a sub of all zeros and for the debit 10,000 and then for the credit we will use account 1810 and sub account of all zeros again and the credit will be 10,000 we will set the handling to release now and we will click finish you pull this batch back up, you'll notice it has a status of B, which means it's balanced, and you'll notice the current cycle is 1, and number of cycles is 12, and the period is 12, 1999. This batch has not been generated yet, so let's close out of journal transactions and go into generate recurring. And here we will generate this transaction. And we will set the handling to release now. And then we will click finish. If you pull this batch back up, You'll notice it has a status of B, which is for balanced. You'll notice the current cycle is 1, number of cycles is 12, and the current period is 12, 1999. This batch has not been generated yet, so let's close out of journal transactions and go into generate recurring, where we will generate this transaction for this period. In this screen, you'll want to select recurring transaction you want to generate and then click begin processing. This will generate a journal transaction batch that can be viewed in the journal transaction screen 
Let's go take a look at how these appear in the journal transaction screen. You will see there are two transactions that show up in the journal transaction screen. The first one is the original batch that has a status of B. When we view that batch, you will see that the number of cycles is 11. The first one is the original batch that has a status of of B. When we view that batch, you will see that the number of cycles has changed from 12 to 11 since we generated one of the recurring transactions. You will also notice that the period has changed to 01-2000. This batch will stay available to pull up in the journal transaction screen until the last cycle has been processed. Now let's look at the batch that was created when we processed the recurring batch. You'll notice that the current cycle is zero and the number of cycles is zero and the type is non-recurring. These batches are assigned new batch numbers and have a type of non-recurring. You'll also notice that the current cycle and number of cycles is zero. Once generated, these recurring journal transactions function the same as any other journal transaction. These recurring batches will not generate on their own, so you'll have to generate them every period. This concludes the process of entering recurring entries in General Ledger. I hope this video was helpful.